Uh, thank you for the two uh, talks. I think this uh, gives us enough stimulation for the next four days of discussions. Um, we should keep uh, our discussion as short as possible, but I think I would like to spend a few minutes to these introductions. Who uh, wanted to make some questions or some remarks? Yes, please, uh, Philips. How about now? Oh, that's working more than it should. Okay. <laughs> so um, my question is uh, to, uh, to Jürgen Mittelstrass. You, you emphasized that um, we have to be thinking about long-term responsibility. And you also uh, mentioned that because of the fact that it's very difficult for us to know what things will be like in the far future, that our responsibilities for the near future uh, are, uh, to some extent, more, uh, more pressing and more immediate because of the fact that, that it's hard for us to know what the situation will be in the long term. But that, is, but, but that thinking must be done uh, without ignoring our longer term responsibilities. Now, what I'm wondering is, let's take, for example, uh, a, uh, an issue that you brought up of, of, uh, of nuclear waste. Today we're faced with a really severe carbon problem and one of the ways in the short term of dealing with the carbon problem is greater reliance on nuclear energy. But then that carries with it this longer term uh, uh, problem of how to deal with the waste. And among the problems of not knowing what will be the situation in the long term. We don't know whether thousands of years from now, whether people will have any appreciation of the dangers of nuclear waste. It's, it seems unlikely that people thousands of years from now will lack that appreciation, but it could happen. It's, it's difficult for us to know. At the same time, we know that if we don't do something about carbon really soon, that we could reach tipping points that will make it uh, really difficult uh, in the near term to, to deal with climate problems. Now, without actually asking for an answer to the question, what are the philosophical tools that we would have available to try to understand how to make decisions between our very long-term responsibilities and our sort of shorter term responsibilities. What kinds of philosophical tools do we use to make those decisions? I don't think that philosophy has a tool as in a strict sense. Um, uh, two distinctions, and I would stress again, um, the distinction between um, long-term responsibility in a very general way and uh, which should guide everything which we discuss under the terms of, um, of sustainability and intergenerational uh, uh, justice and, uh, uh, and whether we have to deal with the same situation or whether we could think about the same situation for future generations um, like our situation. This is not possible. So the, the question whether we, we care um, responsibility in the same way and in the same measure uh, we uh, have towards uh, the next generations, um, this distinction has to be made. And the only answer I have uh, to deal with both uh, problems is that um, um, if we, uh, or if every generation, like other, our, our generation, um, is doing the obvious, 
that is um, passing on the earth to the next generation, two or three generations. I mean, this is close, this is uh, uh, concrete. If we do this, we will secure the future of mankind. I mean, so it's, uh, it's an imperative for us now and uh, any, uh, um, any uh, look into a very, very uh, distant uh, future is not possible. It's, it's, an, uh, it's abstract, it's not concrete. But nevertheless, if we do our duty now, with respect to the next two or three generations, we will also do our duty to very distant generations. That's all we, that's all we can do. scheme, mathematical construction, which can incorporate these problems. If this is not possible, there's nothing to do with science. It's philosophical. We are not philosophers. Not because I don't like philosophers, but philosophy is completely different from mathematics. In order to convince the great public that we have something to say, more than philosophical discussions, we need mathematical problems to translate into mathematical problems, no matter what you can think of, and put under experimental verification the basic problems which are coming from this mathematical description. Otherwise, we become philosophers, and since we are not philosophers, we lose the game. So please, make a clear distinction between philosophy and science. Thank you. Well, uh, let me also say, from my point of view, uh, one thing which we notify nowadays is that more and more human work is replaced by work of robotics. Uh, I really uh, wonder how that uh, has implications on our daily life. If you don't have uh, your satisfactory daily work with your hands and med uh, re reflections and so on uh, with some goal, then w what will the human society do? Political conflicts, kind of... Uh, this, of course, is relevant for our sister academy also, the Social Science Academy, but we should consider these things also, not only the waste storage. I think for some waste storage, we will find appropriate good ways, but uh, not for the human behavior. We have studied this problem, and the answer is that uh, no matter what you can think of, the future, the asymptotic limit to our problems will be the conclusion that we are a thinking machine. Mankind is an electromagnetic system which has been invented to study problems. Let us not forget that so far, all studies intended to measure the amount of energy for thinking of our brain is zero. In other words, there's no experimental proof that our thinking implies energy needs for our brain. I am working in this not as a fundamental activity of uh, my research studies, but the problem is that if the energy needed for our brain for thinking 
was known, was possible to be measured, and we have the rec world record on the amount of energy needed to be measured. So there's no question. The conclusion would be that we are wrong. But this is not the case. In other words, asymptotically speaking, our future generation in 1,000 years or 1 billion years from now, we have 5 billion years before the sun, the sun starts off, so we have time. But sooner or later, we have to answer the question, how it is possible to explain the difficulty in having an original idea. The mathematical models of our brain cannot be electronic circuits, but antennas, due to the fact that electronic circuitry will give too high probability for what we need to know about a new idea to be produced by human brain. So these fundamental questions are possible to be translated into mathematical and scientific problems to be investigated with our most advanced technology. And for example, we have uh, the world record in time of flight, 15 picoseconds. There's no other fellow who can open his mouth on okay. this problem. So, Beto Strauss want to say a few words. Sorry? So. Then we go to the coffee break. Well, just a short remark. Of course, there's a strict distinction between philosophy and mathematics. But answering the question about um, what kind of responsibility we have for future generations, it is a philosophical question, certainly not a mathematical one. Mathematic, uh, um, uh, mathematics doesn't answer the question what the situation of future generations may be and what kind of problems future generations will have. But this is exactly the question we have to raise when talking about responsibilities yeah, but have no answer. future generations. Zero answer. Philosophical answer means zero answer. Let's look for answers during the coffee break <laughs> and come back according to the schedule at 10.40, please.